and welcome again from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs in Reading, England. A fairly quick video today. I want to show you how to make a very useful piece of test equipment. It's this light bulb over current protector. It's very useful when you're working on guitar amplifiers and it's a kind of must-have piece of equipment if you're thinking of doing that. What it does, it, it's very helpful if the amplifier is pulling too much current and blowing fuses. You plug it in, it blows a fuse, you put another fuse in, it blows that fuse, you don't really know why, you can't do any decent diagnosis. This helps you to diagnose that sort of situation. And all it does is to sit between the mains coming in, it goes via the bulb, and then the mains out goes to the amplifier, so that when the amplifier is on, the bulb will glow. I'll tell you how it works in a moment. I'll show you a quick circuit diagram and you'll also be able to make one of these for yourself. It's very cheap and inexpensive and very easy to make. Right here we are on the overhead cam. Let me quickly show you how this works. It's a very simple circuit diagram but maybe not obvious if you've never made anything like this. So let's take it one step at a time. So here we have our three terminals coming in and they are live, neutral, and earth. This is going to our mains plug here, which plugs into the main supply. And then we have an output over here. Let's put that live, neutral, and earth into which we're going to plug the amplifier. So that's our socket here. We'll plug our amplifier into here. And again, it's going to be live, neutral, and earth. Well, we can, first of all, as you probably guessed, just connect the earth together. We don't want to do anything special with the earth. And we can also connect the neutrals together. So as you can see, the circuit diagram is not particularly difficult so far. But what we're going to do is, in this live feed, we're going to intervene by putting a 150 watt filament, not an LED, light bulb. I'll tell you why it's 150 watts in a moment. You can still buy these. We're going to put that into the live feed like that. OK, so forget about the earth for the moment. That's just taken as a given. Here's the mains coming in via our mains plug. Here's the mains going out to our amplifier via our socket. So what on earth does this bulb do? Well, I think you can see immediately that if I were to put a switch here, just an on-off switch like this, and close it, short circuit the live to the neutral the bulb would just come on this would just be all like an ordinary domestic light switch in your house you turn the switch on live goes through the bulb it goes down to neutral goes back to neutral the, the bulb lights fully i hope that helps you to see that if we have a short circuit condition on the amplifier here it's blowing fuses every time you put a fuse in and turn it on pop the fuse goes and because the amplifier is short circuit for some reason which we'll come on to in a moment then this lamp will glow very brightly because this will effectively be a short circuit if it's a sort of half of a short circuit or a third of a short circuit this lamp will glow also glow quite brightly so this acts as a protection device for the amplifier and stops it blowing fuses. The amp won't blow fuses under these circumstances because it's only pulling a few hundred milliamps or something. It's not pulling any significant amount of current, so it won't blow the fuse. So if nothing else, this saves you a lot of money in fuses because time and time again I've plugged the amp in, the fuse is gone, put a new fuse in, plug it in, it goes again, fiddle around a bit, try something, plug it in, it blows another fuse, and they're, you know, they're 15 pence a time, it's not a lot, but it, you know, it does add up, and you, you do find yourself getting through, through fuses, which is really annoying. But that's not the only benefit of this device, it allows you to do a little bit of diagnosis, because, because once the fuse is gone, you can't do anything, you can't get into the amplifier and start checking voltages or feeling something's getting a bit hot or anything like that, but under these kind of low current conditions, where some current's going through the amplifier but not enough to blow the fuse, you can quite often feel something's getting a bit hot or um, check a voltage quickly to see what's happening and do a bit of diagnosis on the amp. So there you go, couldn't be a simpler circuit. I know you're capable of wiring that up, just use an ordinary lamp holder. W what actually happens with the bulb, of course, it acts as a resistor and drops the voltage from 240 volts here 
uh, down to nothing if you've got a short circuit, but down to, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, 50 volts if you've got a half short circuit. So in other words, it makes the voltages manageable here. And the other interesting thing about a filament bulb is that the hotter it gets, the bigger the resistance. So it acts as a kind of break. The more current that goes through here, the hotter this gets and the bigger the resistance, so the more it kind of turns the current down. So that's very useful. And um, you can use a 100 watt bulb, but the 150 watt bulbs have a bigger resistance and so are more useful um, in this device. As I say, you can get them online, 150 watt filament bulb, obviously not an LED bulb. Let's have a quick look now about what can be going on in the amplifier to cause this, this short circuit condition. So as soon as you come into the amplifier on, on the main side, let's just think of live and neutral for the moment, we can take the earth as a given. So live usually comes in through a fuse and a sort of on-off switch, this is a sort of typical arrangement really. And then it almost always goes into the primary of a transformer. And then on the secondary side of the transformer, we'll, we'll simplify this, you have some sort of, um, typically some sort of rectification, so you have some sort of bridge diode. And then you have some smoothing capacitors, this is a sort of typical HT setup for, uh, for an amp. You have other windings here, of course, for the filaments and stuff, but let's just keep this really simple. So you've got this amp in, you turn on the switch, pop, it blows the fuse straight away. Put another one in, pop, it blows it, not, it's just blowing fuses all the time. Um, there are two most common causes for this. One is that the mains transformer has gone. It's just, it's got too hot, it's burnt out in inverted commas, and what's happened on the primary side is these windings have become sort of effectively shorted together to produce a very low resistance here. And as soon as you put to turn that on, it's almost a short circuit and it just blows the fuse. And that means you have to change the mains transformer. I have changed many of those, as I'm sure you would uh, expect. So what I do is when, when I have this situation, I um, measure using an ohm meter the primary of the, of the uh, mains transformer. And if it's very low, almost, short, almost a short circuit, that could be the problem. The other neat trick you can do is if you can somehow disconnect entirely the secondary, and often, by the way, these go off onto little spade terminals which plug into the printed circuit board, um, so you can just you know pull out these spade terminals on the secondary side, completely isolate the secondary, turn it on, and the bulb lights, then it's definitely a short circuit um, on the transformer, and the transformer has to be replaced. However, if you disconnect this by pulling the spade terminals or sometimes they just have to cut through the wires and it's easy enough to remake them with some sleeving and some solder and it's only a five minute job so you can cut these um, and then remake them. If you do that and the bulb doesn't light, uh, you know it's not the mains transformer. You can pretty much guarantee the mains transformer is okay. So what else could it be then if it's not mains transformer? Well, it'll be something on the secondary side here for example, these filter capacitors often go short circuit. Uh, that's, in, that's low voltage capacitors in transistor amps, you know, the 2200 microfarads at 50 volts or whatever, often go short circuit. And that's HT capacitors in valve amps, so the, you know, the 22 microfarad, 47 microfarad at 500 volts, they go short circuit. So you turn the amp on, the secondary pulls a huge current through this short circuit, the primary pulls a huge current it, it, trying to satisfy the secondary and it pops the fuse or makes the bulb glow. So again, it's quite useful this. You can um, sometimes, as I say, turn the switch on, the, bulb, the bulb's glowing. Um, we know the amp's pulling quite a bit of current, but not enough to damage it. And you can start having a look around here. Is this capacitor hot? Is the bridge diode rectifier warm? I mean, you can start doing a little bit of diagnosis. Um, which you cannot do when it's just a question of the fuse blowing. So that's the use of this, of this device. It's purely to check for short circuit or near short circuit situations on the power supply front end of the amplifier. Okay, that's all you need to know. I'll show you it quickly in action, but of course there's nothing really much to see. 
I'll just well, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug a mains cable in there with uh, two bare wires and touch them together, you know, <laughs> to, to simulate the short circuit condition. It feels very counterintuitive to put a, a plug in there and then to short the live and neutral. But of course, the live's going through the bulb, so all it will do is, as I said earlier, just act like a household light switch. There's a switch on your wall. There's your lamp. There's your live, and there's your neutral. That's exactly how your house wiring works. Turn on the switch. Current goes through there, through there, and that's the situation that we've got here. So have, we'll have a quick look at that, not that it's terribly exciting, and then um, hopefully you have enough knowledge to make yourself one of these. As you can see, I've put it on a piece of wood and made it look a bit nice, but uh, that's fairly straightforward. OK, I'm not recommending you do this, of course, because it's fairly dangerous. I just wanted to show you. I've got a mains cable here with uh, stripped ends. I'm not going to bother about the earth, we don't care about that. And um, I'm just going to short those two together once this is plugged in here. Obviously the, this is going to be live when, when it's plugged in here, so don't be grabbing hold of this. So we'll plug in, we'll switch on, and now we're going to simulate, don't forget, this is going to the amplifier. Now, off it goes to the amplifier, and we've got a short circuit primary, and bump, there you go, the light comes on. And when it comes on that bright, you know it's a dead short circuit on the primary. Simple as that. Very useful piece of equipment, and uh, I thoroughly recommend you get one if you're going to be doing anything like testing amplifiers, um, you know, more than one or two. Well, I hope you agree that wasn't rocket science, a very simple circuit, very easy for you to make one of these, and an essential piece of equipment if you're going to be testing guitar amplifiers. I'll make this the first of a series where I look at uh, various useful bits of test equipment and um, you can start getting yourself uh, uh, set together. None of them are very expensive and they're all fairly easy to make. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next video.